Hello, I'm Leslie Ansel. I'm a regional consultant in the Central Division, Central Region, and I'm here to do a sampling of Codex training. So um, this is the first day of Common Core Codex, and we've gone over some of the increased rigor and discussed uh, the college and career readiness aspects of it, and you've had a chance to look at some of the materials for Codex, at least get your hands on it. So now we're going to talk about the instructional model. So if you would, take your implementation guide and open it up to page 16. I'm going to talk about how the model can be implemented. And this would be in a 45 to 50 minute classroom, a suggestion. So you begin with whole group introduction. You would spend about, the teacher spends about 10 or 15 minutes laying the groundwork, setting the foundation for the day. Um, then there's a half an hour of very flexible instructional time which the students can work in small group uh, instruction, and we're going to talk about these icons in a few minutes, or work in pairs and or individually, but this is about a half an hour out of a 45 to 55 minute time period. And very flexible based on student needs and so forth, with grouping students and so forth. And then at the end, a five to 10 minute wrap up by the teacher where everybody comes back together. And, and what you'll notice in the uh, teacher's guide is that there's this end of the day uh, question, which could be an exit ticket or a homework discussion question. It's a check mark with a circle around it. And that's something that you can use as you glance through and we look through the um, teaching guide sampler, a rhythm, the pace. What is a day of instruction approximately? So here again, a 45 to 55 minute example of how the model can be implemented. Um, here is a sample, uh, we're going to have a couple slides that talk about a 90 minute, if that's the time frame that you're working with. And here, you begin with 40 minutes of whole group instruction, okay, and then uh, 40 minutes uh, in, in between, which is divided into 20 and 20, again very flexible and I'll show you how in a moment, teacher led or small group instruction or small group or independent reading. Students can rotate in between things. This is very flexible and adaptable. And then again, coming together at the end for a 10 minute wrap up with the entire class. The idea being of showing you these is that it's a very flexible model to implement. Um, and we've seen it done in both, in all different kinds of ways. This is one slide that I really like because it gives you an idea of some of the samples and examples of how it can be done. So here's that 90 minute block. And here's the beginning, uh, 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 the uh, first 40 minutes of the class would start with a 10 minute uh, teacher led instruction and then again uh, flexible in terms of what you want to do for the next half hour with students whether it's small group work or individual work or students may be working in pairs. Um, and then after that 40 minutes then uh, a block of time that's also very flexible. Uh, for 40 minutes you can have literature circles. You can have independent reading for students. You can have students study the novels. And if you recall, the novels, if there's two novels with each codex. Typically, they're done maybe halfway through the school year after you're done with half the units of instruction. You could have novel study. So you see there's that literature in the middle. And then, again, wrap up for a 10-minute whole group wrap up. So this is just some, just to give you some idea of how Codex has been implemented, depending on the amount of time that you have. Um, um, most of you are probably familiar with RTI response to intervention. Um, if you've worked with Scholastic, you're familiar with some of our intervention programs. Codex is a core program for English language arts for middle school. So that's tier one. And we have READ 180, which is our tier two intervention program kind of our flagship program, if you will, at Scholastic. And Tier 3, for students who really need that phonetic, basic, foundational set of reading skills. And this is also to say that Codex can be implemented flexibly. If we go back to the previous slide, Read 180 students can be integrated into the Codex model as well. Uh, there's all that flexibility, and we've seen that done in other places, as well as System 44 students, if you have students that need that, that foundational intervention. Um, um, many of us, I'm, I'm a visual person, and as you get familiar with the Codex 
teacher support materials, you're going to learn these icons, but I thought I would just show them to you as an example. These are learning activities icons. So you have the language, the reading, writing, and the speaking and listening. And they're color-coded, so you're going to find reading those texts are always blue, and writing is always green. And as you get familiar with your teacher's guide and, and, and so forth, you're going to learn these icons, and they're going to help you navigate through things kind of quickly. Um, um, these are uh, skills and, and, and uh, close reading. Again, here's uh, the, the, length, the, the writing. And then there's that circle with the check mark in it that, that demarcates the end of a day of instruction. So just running through what these look like. These are close reading and multiple reading, as we talked about with the increased rigor of college and career. Um, multiple reading of complex texts, and that's really the heart and soul of Codex. So there's three readings, first reading, second reading, third reading of every text. And so that's just to highlight that for you. And this is the text complexity triangle that we discussed previously. Every text in Codex has that. It's a shorthand way for you to understand um, where on the text complexity is this text. It helps you think through for your students what will be their challenges in approaching this text. Um, these are the differentiation icons, if you will, whether you're going to need to boost um, and offer some scaffolded instruction or whether you can stretch some of your gifted and talented students, students with disabilities, struggling readers, and English language learners. So those are those icons. And these, you, you saw before, these are the quick, quick reference for whole group instruction, individual, small group, Okay, students working in pairs, that's what those mean. And again, you're going to be very conversant with these after you get started using Codex. And these are content area icons. Um, um, science, uh, technology, history, all these are embedded. They're part of the Codex readings. It makes for nice uh, connections with your content area learning. Um, um, if you turn to page 26 and 27 in your implementation guide, what you're going to see is a unit planning guide. This is a bird's eye view, an overview of a codex unit, which is approximately a month of instruction, give or take, depending. Um, uh, you see some of the colors that we talked about. You see the green for writing, and you see the, the blue for the three texts, and so forth. And it also gives you uh, a sense of the timing and how long it's estimated or how long it usually takes to go through this particular part of instruction. Um, again, the introduction, the vocabulary, first text, and more vocabulary. Uh, on the bottom are the standards listed and the activities and how long it takes. Yellow, yellow here is always the color of differentiation, as some of you who may be familiar with, with Read 180 know that yellow means differentiation in our materials. Um, and how to help you differentiate for those students that we talked about. Anatomy of a codex unit. What's interesting about this slide and why it's important is codex was really backwards designed, if you will. Start with the end in mind. And the end is that performance task. In other words, what do our students need to be able to do? What do they need to know for the next generation, for that increased rigor? And that is that writing performance task. That's what all these next generation assessments are all about. That's what the college and career folks are telling us is needed. So that this came first in the design of Codex. And these pieces were put together. How can we help students arrive and be able to do this performance task? So the anchor text one the, and all the parts of it, the second text, the collaborate and present because the rigor of college and career requires that our students are able to speak and listen and collaborate and do research and work together, and the writing instruction. So all that leads to the performance task, and then after that there are extended readings, content that build on content area knowledge and are related to the content of the unit. So that's just, I think it's important to understand um, backwards design, and that's how Codex was designed organically to bring students to, to that next generation, to that rigor in, in, of college and career readiness. Uh, in your uh, implementation guide on page 25 is um, 
a, an outline of approximately how a unit will go from day one to day 25, with including the extended readings. You'll notice the color coding here. Um, and in the interest of time, I'm not going to necessarily go through, but it, right now in our example here, but we would be going through this and marking up the implementation guide with the proper pages for the following activity where, where the uh, participants will really go into this in detail. Um, here is an example of the two texts that, that are used in example. Course one means um, fifth grade. Sixth. Sixth grade. Course two means seventh grade. And so these two units, if you'll notice, Unit 4 and Unit 5, about halfway through the school year here. And uh, in your sampler, this is the one that's featured, Coming to America. That's the one we'll be working with shortly in our activity that's coming up. We have a jigsaw activity coming. And Unit 5, this is the one that's featured in the implementation guide, The Stolen Childhoods. So here's a color view of it because the implementation guide is not in color. So you can kind of see how it looks. Now we're going to form a jigsaw group so that um, at the end of this activity, everyone will come together and have delved into all the parts of the unit. So I'm going to have you number off one through five, and I'm going to give each of the, those one through fives their assignments, and then we're going to come back together and share that so at the end of all this, everyone will have a good overview of a unit of instruction. Okay? So number off one through five. Um, and Here's the question for your activity that I want you to think about. And time out from my sample presentation because uh, Maya Whitney suggested this was a better focus question than the one that was in the PowerPoint, and I agreed with her, so I incorporated it. It's not the one that appears in the PowerPoint, which was more of a reflection. This is actually getting people to think about their instruction. Okay, back in my presenter mode. The focus question is, what will help you to teach this part of Code X? So group one is going to cover the introduction. And those are the pages, and we went over them a few minutes ago. Group two is going to take a look at academic vocabulary, focusing on using these pages in the sampler. Group three, anchor text. Group four, collaborate and present. And group five is going to take a look at that writing performance task. And here are the pages in the sampler, which we marked up a few minutes ago. Questions about the jigsaw. Thank you very much for your time in terms of this sample presentation, Stand and Deliver. Did you press that? Yeah.